Hello, beautiful people. Happy Friday. As they say, better late than never. <laughs> life be lifing. Okay. So we are a little late. I was supposed to do this live and talk about the ones who live before the season finale. I was supposed to, you know, talk about the previous episodes and give my predictions for the season finale. That didn't happen. And then after the season finale, I was supposed to just talk about the whole series. That was like two weeks ago, but it don't matter because we're here now, okay? <laughs> we are here to talk about the Walking Dead spinoff series, The Ones Who Live. Now, The Walking Dead has quite a few spinoffs, but previously, the only ones that I saw were Dead City, which I did on my channel as well as Daryl Dixon spinoff, which I also covered on my channel if you want to check those out. And just a quick recap for anyone who isn't familiar, I watched The Walking Dead from the beginning and then I stopped watching when Glenn died. And I can't remember exactly. I either stopped watching as soon as he died or like um he died and i was real angry but like i maybe watched like one or two episodes but i pretty much stopped watching when glenn died and jumped back in when they did the dead city spinoff and a daryl dixon spinoff so i will say as someone who stopped watching a hundred years ago i think dead city and daryl dixon was a lot easier to get into being unfamiliar. I feel like this one is not necessarily hard to get into if you're unfamiliar, but it was a lot of like gaps and unanswered questions. And the only reason I knew a little bit is cause like, <clears throat> excuse me, even though I haven't watched the show, I see little stuff online. Like I saw online that Carl died. I saw online that Rick was dead. Um, but I was very confused. Like I'm saying like, wait, him and Michonne, First of all, I never saw Rick and Michonne together romantically. Um, to the best of my recollection, Rick liked that lady in Alexandra who husband was abusive and she had a little son that I didn't care for that shot Rick's son in the eye. That's the last person I remember Rick trying to be with romantically. I do not ever recall Rick and Michonne being romantic. <laughs> so that was new for me with this show. But I don't know. I pretty much checked out on Walking Dead. And honestly, one thing that I was still into The Walking Dead, but when they got to Alexandria, I'm gonna be honest, I wasn't as gung-ho about it. I've re-watched those earlier seasons quite a bit. And I feel like those earlier seasons were my favorite. Once we get to Alexandria. And we get to a point where they're killing off likable characters and we're having all of these characters that I don't really care about. First of all, I mean, I was never a fan of the governor coming back two seasons. I mean, the governor was perfectly fine the first season. I did not feel like we needed him to come back. But once we get to Alexandria, I really didn't care about the older white lady and her husband who were kind of like the lead over Alexandria. I didn't care for their son. I never cared for Abraham and his little crew when they got introduced, but I was still watching the show. It was still fine. Um, but I, I didn't care about a lot of the characters. And then they killed off Bob and they killed off Glenn and they killed off um, the the kid from Everybody Hates Chris. And I'm like, y'all killing off everybody I like <laughs> and adding in a bunch of characters I don't care for. And I felt like as the show progressed, one thing that they just could not get right is likable characters. And I feel like that's kind of where the ones who live shine is I feel like we actually got some really good characters. Even the characters that are quote unquote bad guys and the ones who live are good characters in my opinion. Like, I don't know. We get to those later seasons of, well, I won't even say later seasons because it wasn't the later seasons. I checked out pretty early. When we get to the later seasons I sticked around for, I feel like The Walking Dead was terrible at creating characters that I actually cared about. And I did end up, I stopped watching when Glenn died, but a few years ago, I did get curious and I went to look up like the highest rated episodes of The Walking Dead since I stopped watching. And I saw one episode and it was when Michonne had to like go and like 
kill a bunch of kids. Or, like somebody kidnapped some kids and Michonne was pregnant. They talk about that in this spinoff, actually. That was the one episode I did see. They had some like... I don't know this Shakespearean uh black guy and it, like it was a bunch of characters that I was just like who are these people like I I don't know I just didn't care about anybody I just felt like they did not know how to have likable characters because I mean I feel like at the top even if someone wasn't like my fave I had no problem with most of the characters I really like I actually like Merle with his racist behind like <laughs> I like Merle I loved Shane I liked Glenn like, it was a ton of people that I actually liked on the show. And I just felt like as they progressed, I didn't really like anybody. But let's get into the show. I have, like, literally minuscule notes. I really don't have any notes. And I hope I'm just going to try to remember everything because it's been a few weeks since I... <laughs> well, it's been longer. Well, it's been a few weeks since I saw the season finale and a little longer since I saw, like, the show. But let's get into the ones who live... Now, the Ones Who Live spinoff follows Rick and Michonne. And basically, Rick, okay, Rick was dead, bro. Okay, like that's the story I heard. But the way they did it on the show, and I don't know if this spinoff is the first time that the audience knows Rick is alive. Um, I don't know how that all played out. But according to the spinoff, Rick had to go blow a bridge up and everybody thought he was dead. He was presumed dead. But for some reason, Michonne believed that he was still alive and still out there. Now, I don't know if they went more into detail in The Walking Dead, but on this show, I kind of couldn't connect the dots on why would you think he's alive? Because to me, if he's alive and you got to search for him, that kind of don't add up for me. If he's alive, why the hell he don't just come back to you? So I wasn't really clear on her motivation. And she does make a comment about, I think, their daughter. Um, what is that little girl name? I just remember Derek calling her little ass kicker. Judith. She does make a comment about Judith kind of telling her to go find her dad or something. But I don't know. Whatever the hell. Basically, and this is more of a love story wrapped up in here than I thought it would be. So Michonne goes on this mission to find Rick. Now, simultaneously, Rick is alive. And I think they said it was like seven or eight years from the time Rick was presumed dead till this show. I think it was about seven or eight years. Now, Rick does blow up and gets hurt. And this lady, what was that lady name? Jadis, I think was her name. Jadis finds Rick and brings him into this community so that he can, you know, get patched up and live. But this community, okay, they have something called the CRM. And I'm not 100%. I don't know if I was checked out or if I just don't get it or if they didn't explain it well enough. And it's something like in the Walking Dead universe since I left. But there's something called the CRM. Okay, so basically we're living in this community that keeps itself secret and it's ran by a military. But there are other little communities that I really didn't get it because before we get to the last episode, I thought the CRM was this little military, okay? But then once we get to the end, they say that it's like a whole network and only this little brigade where Rick is at was kind of evil. I don't understand it. <laughs> but I think you have to maybe have watched The Walking Dead in order to get it. So pretty much it's just like if you the same way you have a military anywhere and you just have certain little platoons, which I didn't gather that the entire what five episodes, but then at the sixth episode, that's when they bring that in. So I'm not quite clear on the CRM and that whole thing, but Rick is here and he cannot leave. So the first few years though. He's focused on trying to leave to get back to Michonne. And that's why I say I wasn't quite clear on Michonne's motivation and understanding of what the heck happened to Rick, which I don't know if that was explained before the spinoff. 
Because if Rick is alive, why the hell would you have to go get him? Why would you have to go look for him? Why wouldn't he just come to you? So I don't understand how she filled in that blank. But Rick is trying to escape and get out to the point that he chops his hand off, which was when they opened this, that was a good ass scene in my opinion. Rick is out here on this line killing the walkers and he it's like a fire happening he go out he chop his his, his hand off and burn it i was like yo this is kind of good the series is good in my in my humble opinion i thought they did pretty good um but that whole sequence was was really good but we end up getting introduced to Okafor, who I personally really love that character. And he gets killed off pretty quick. And I'm just like, God damn. Now see, Walking Dead, this be my problem with y'all. Y'all love killing off a likable ass character. And, and speaking of killing off characters, not that he was like, I never really cared for Carl. Carl got on my damn nerve. But honestly, once he started to grow up, he wasn't as annoying. But Carl used to piss me. Carl used to get on my nerve. And he got Dale killed. So I'd never forgive him for that. But why the hell did Carl have to die? Like, I'm I'm not motivated to go back and watch the seasons of The Walking Dead after I checked out. Because I just feel like it's not worth it. I think the show went downhill. Even though I didn't watch it. I think it went downhill. But why did Carl have to die? And what always pissed me off, it, well, this is going to piss me off even more now. It always pissed me off so bad when they wrote in the storyline when Rick went crazy after his wife died. The wife that he didn't damn like at the time. <laughs> I'm saying like, baby, you mean to tell me Carol whole daughter died and she didn't lose her mind. But Rick wife that he don't even like died and he loses his Like, that always pissed me off. So now... Rick's son died. Did Rick lose his mind when Carl died? I would really like to know that one because now that's pissed me off even more with that that storyline of him losing his mind when his what was her name Lori when Lori died, who was another character I never liked and couldn't stand. But so Rick is here. He keeps trying to break out. Keep trying to break out. And I guess this is is like an anomaly for them because anybody who comes here and gets Haven. No one tries to leave, but Rick keeps trying to leave. And the whole, this place got to be a secret never made sense for me from jump. Because y'all niggas is out here flying in, in helicopters. You think people don't see that? So when we, and you know, we don't know everything at the top with how they be killing people. So, but just right off rip, I'm like, how you think you got a whole, like all this stuff going on, but it's supposed to be a secret? Like this ain't no small little hidden place. And what if people just randomly just out and about? Like, I don't know. It just never made sense to me that this needs to be secret like this. I don't know. it. Like, if I'm somewhere and you're telling me this needs to be secret, it's just not making logical sense to me. So it kind of was giving me, like, sinister vibes right off rip. Like, y'all up to something. But Okafor has his eyes on Rick and wanting him to be a part of this military CRM thing that's going on. He keeps saying he sees something in him or whatever. And over time, he keeps trying to like get Rick. Finally, Rick decides to join the military, but he still got it in his mind that he's going to try to escape. And one common thread that I thought was really interesting is... The characters of Jadis, Thorn, and Rick, okay, they all come to this compound, become a part of this military, and Thorn started to get on my nerve. When Thorn became part of the military, and well, not when she became part of the military, because when she first becomes part of the military, Okafor has his eye on Thorn and Rick because he knows the sinister stuff that's going down and he sees something in them two to be leaders and to like he feels like we need the CRM but we need to change how things are going down at that point Thorn is perfectly fine but Thorn once Okafor dies and Thorn get I think she got promoted that's when we saw switching her character. I was like, girl, you don't mind. Like, she, I was like, baby, you taking this toy soldier stuff very serious. Like, I was like, baby, calm down. And what didn't make sense to me with the story and the character is how quickly 
darn flip from being all on uh, Okafor's whole mission to suddenly Okafor had it all wrong. And I'm like, baby, you switched out quick as hell. But the common thread that I thought was interesting is Rick has something to hold on to. Dawn has something to hold on to. There was people they loved out in the world that they wanted to get, get back to. But it came across to me that Jadis and Thorn like gave up or lost their hope and they found something to cling to in substitute of what it was that they were missing. And it was really giving me like, y'all want Rick to do the same thing. Like you're upset. Like you want him because there's a point where, like I said, Rick decides to join the military, but he's still trying to escape. There's a point where Rick makes a plan to escape, but some little girl get caught up in, and they find this little girl. Thorne sees him trying to escape and was going to stop him. And I was really sitting here like, girl, why you care so much? Like, I don't know. She was going so hard when her and Rick would be having these conversations. And I'm just like, like what? I don't know. It just felt like they were clinging to this whole CRM mission because they had nothing else. So there's a moment where each of them die, Dorn and Jadis, and right at the moment of death, it's like, wow, well, shit. Like <laughs> I made the wrong choice. Like, and I'm just like, did y'all ever? truly believe in the cause or did you only believe in the cause because you had nothing else to believe in like this was the only thing pretty much left for you to cling to so on the flip side which they the dialogue got a little cheesy but i get the point the whole thing was and i'm mad i can't remember what they said verbatim but it was something like love never dies or <laughs> What did my, it was, I think it was either Michonne or Rick who says it to Thorne at the end when Thorne pieces it together that Michonne is his wife and the love that he had been looking for. Because when she comes to the town, we pretend like she's someone else. And it's just like, love doesn't die and love is hope. Even at the end of the world, you have, and I'm just like, y'all, we get it. We get it. Like, why did y'all write that like that? But I, I really wish we had more episodes because I just wanted more explored with those characters because it was really from what I got the little bit they gave us it was really giving me like I got nothing else to hold on to so I'm just gonna hold on to this and I want you to do the same thing now while Rick is there Michonne is on her quest on the road by herself trying to find Rick and she comes across some people that need help. She help them. Long story short, this whole group ends up following her. And she tries to tell them, hey, go back to my little town. But they're like, no, we're going to help you, you know, find your husband. Then we'll all go back to your town. And this is kind of, if I remember correctly, the, the moment when we discovered that this whole CRM is really doing some unscrupulous stuff because it's a pregnant woman, her boyfriend, a whole group of people. And this one guy who can like make bombs and, and, and different stuff. We're all walking along, minding our business, just walking down the damn street when they get like bombed with this uh time. And Michonne and the guy who do the explosive and stuff are the only two who survive and they barely survive. And it was so crazy to me because at the point it's playing out in the show. They're holed up somewhere trying to get better. But, you know, you don't really know how time is passing. But later on when Michonne is talking to Rick, she's like, yeah, we had to get, it took us a year. And I was like, what the, y'all did a year? Like, what the, I was like so blown away. And this is why I'm saying, like, I don't know if it's because I stopped watching The Walking Dead when Glenn died, so I'm not hip to the CRM and all this stuff. But the whole, first of all, The motive they gave for this whole, like, wh like what's going on? Like, what's the secret? What? It was real janky for me because it's the same old story uh, motive that you always get. Let's, 
get all the resources. Let's get all the power. And I'm just like, that's it? That's all y'all was trying to do? Like, that was it? So basically, y'all was just like Negan and his little crew. Like, basically, y'all got the same thing going on except y'all niggas got choppers. Like, y'all doing the same. I don't know. That was kind of lame to me. That was kind of lame to me. Like, it's the same. Like, we couldn't give them something better. Like, when we get to Major Bill and this whole briefing that was like cloaked in mystery, I'm like, that's it. But anyway. It doesn't make logical sense to me that when Rick goes to have this briefing with Major Bill, in one breath he's like, "Yeah, you know, we're gonna all die out." So then, why are you why are you killing people? Like on one hand, you talking about we gonna all die out and we won't survive another 10, 20 years, but you're killing random innocent people. Like I don't understand. Like it just doesn't make any sense. Like random people are walking down the street and you just just drop gas on them. And that whole thing is they still resource, but y'all didn't steal nothing from these people. This wasn't a town y'all went into and, and killed people and took what they had. These were random people walking down the street and y'all just gassed them. I don't know. Stuff like that kind of annoys me because like, wow, well, yo, I don't know. I guess I really need like whys. Like, why? Why did we do that? What did we gain? What did we get? Y'all whole thing is we got to be secret. Well, we don't know nothing about y'all, bro. So why you kill us? Your whole thing is killing people for resources. Y'all ain't come take nothing from us. We ain't have no damn resources. We just people walking down the damn street. I just didn't understand it. I just didn't understand it. And it also plays into why I say it made no sense why Thorne switched up so easily. So... You all, Oka 4 was wrong, and then now you're all down with the program. So you down with killing random innocent people and killing kids? Like, normally, I don't care how evil you are. Normally, you cross the line. Like, you draw the line, I mean, at killing kids. Like, Scarface ain't even kill kids. So I was so thrown off, like, we going to just kill kids, which is something else that ain't made no sense. So when we... Okay, the whole thing, I'm I'm jumping around, y'all, but the whole story is Michelle try to find Rick. They find each other, which was a really good scene, which I was like, I, I bet you that's Michelle. I bet you that's Michonne. And I bet you that's how they're finna get together. And that's how it was. When Okafor gets killed, uh, we was getting to get back for bombing our friends. The helicopter comes down. Michonne is killing the guys who got the little helmet on. The last guy she runs to, helmet comes off his Rick. I knew that's how that was gonna play out, but it was still really good. Um and my behind is like, baby, if we don't just motherfucking run, but Rick shook, he's scared. You don't know the reach. You don't know the power. We can't do it. And we get more little cheesy dialogue. Our love can, we can do anything. We can conquer the world, Rick, with our love. <laughs> I get it. But the, the, the lines was, was okay. Um, <laughs> but Oh, yeah, I forgot to say, so the Jadis lady that I mentioned, and when she popped up on screen, like a damn, I don't know, she popped up like a Ninja Turtle villain. I was like, who is this lady? Who is? But apparently she was on The Walking Dead um, after my time of the show. But I was like, who is this lady? Because I kind of liked her. I was like, who is she? But... She kept, she was, well, she told Rick that she kept this little secret journal where if he killed her, they would find it and would know all about his wife, kids, town, and all of them would die. Now me, I guess my whole town would have been dead because I would have called, I kept saying, as I was watching the show, I was like, I bet you it ain't real because I don't really have to write that. I only have to tell you I wrote it to get you to not kill me, but I don't really have to write it. So I was really feeling like, I bet you she ain't write it. Like, I, I bet this little file that she telling you she has, I just knew she did not have that file written up on Rick about his, what's it called? What is the town name? Are they still in Alexandria? Whatever the town name was. I was just like, I bet you she don't have this file. I bet you she don't have nothing for them to find to give away where y'all going to be at. But I would have been wrong because baby had it. So after they finished and i felt like when they was leaving it was so sloppy i was like rick michonne y'all have been living in the damn zombie apocalypse for way too long they literally left the most blatant breadcrumbs 
to follow and lead to where they was. And I'm just like, Rick, you were so shook about these people reaching. I get it. Y'all were supposed to be presumed dead. But I just kind of felt like that was just so ridiculous how they just left that there. But the whole thing we end up doing is Rick goes back because we're like, yo, we got to stop them. We can't just leave. And we got to get the foul because Jadis is dead. But Michonne goes to sneak in. There is this briefing going on with all the soldiers sitting in the room watching a little teleprompter. The way Michonne is able to just walk in this room, sit in this whole top secret thing that's happening, get her tail up, open the door, light coming in because it's dark in here because we're watching a little film, light flashing in, she pushed the door open. And I'm like, don't nobody notice this? Like, if she really supposed to be here getting this briefing, can she just get up and leave? That, it was, it was kind of taking me out. It was a lot of moments like that where it was just too convenient. It, it, like, come on now. Come on now. We supposed to be this almighty, secret, powerful, you know. And then when they kept saying the lines about how all these little important heads and stuff was all going to be converging on one place at the same time, it was just, it was all just so conveniently written. Let's see. The way they killed off Noah. And yes, that's the, yes, what's crazy. I can't even look at the screen the same when the scene comes up. That pissed me off beyond. And see, it was a build up when i finally stopped watching the show the kid from everybody hates chris was the way he was killed that that oh my god that that yeah that that mm. oh boy got him killed and it was so horrific how that kid had to die and then they had this whole thing where they made us think glenn died when he falls into on the ground with all the walkers and the walkers are tearing and we see glenn kind of yelling and then we come back to find glenn actually didn't get killed they was ripping into i think the person that had fell on top of glenn or something like that and glenn was able to get out so then y'all bash glenn in the head and actually kill like it was an accumulation of me being just pissed off with the show that when glenn gets killed i was like y'all eff it and i'm ch like i'm done i'm done with it i was just i literally I might be the only person. Well, I don't think I might be the only person, but I'm probably one of the few people that just stopped watching when Glenn died. But I just was like, nah, my G. Nah. Hey, Nikki, would you rather be surrounded by people like that or be alone in an apocalypse? Why try and stop me from escaping? Um, Surrounded by people like what? The, the evil CRM people? Or Okafor and Thorn. Thorn got on my last goddamn nerve. I'm, I'm oh gosh. No. At the beginning, she didn't get on my nerve, but once she gets her promotion, I don't know. Like I felt like everything was just. Too, I was like, girl, calm down. Like everything felt. I'm like, girl, you ain't in the military for real. Like I get it. This the apocalypse. This y'all little. But I don't know. I'm just like, girl, calm down. Like calm down. I don't know. She was just too when they was doing the salute i get it like this is y'all real military but it was such a joke to me i was like baby stop saluting like this ain't the real military like i mean it's a real military for them but it ain't the real military like this the apocalypse i don't know it's like baby you stop saluting like girl if you don't calm the hell down like i don't know she was getting on my nerves she was so mother freaking serious after she got that promotion uncle four had it wrong <sighs> I'm just like, girl, G.I. Jane, calm down. Calm. She got on my nerve. Um, so I don't know. I don't want to be alone in the apocalypse because then, you know, when they say we talking about solitary confinement and men alone, me, you start to go crazy, and I need to keep all my faculties about me. So I guess I'd rather be with these crazy people, child, because at least I won't go crazy. <laughs> me too. After Negan killed Abraham and then Glenn, I was done. I didn't care about Abraham getting killed. Like I said, when Abraham always got on my nerve, Abraham, when I tell you, I always say the same thing. I always say the greatest trick the devil ever pulled was making the world believe this whole 
Men are logical, women are emotional. Abraham was the most emotional ass in the world. He got on my nerve. Everything Abraham did, he was moving off emotion. Abraham reminded me of like an extra strong toddler. Like imagine a toddler that's like the Hulk and can just smash it. Like he was always wanting to throw a fit and get all angry. When we first are introduced to Abraham them, and we have that whole thing that happened where we're separated after the prison. And he was all mad because Glenn didn't want to join his mission. Like, let me go. Like, why you can't? Like, calm down, bro. Like, that whole introduction of Abraham, it just got on. He got on my nerve. I really couldn't stand him. But at the time, it wasn't the biggest of deal because it was a ton of other characters that I did like. And I was still into the story. But I never liked Abraham. When he died, I was like, good riddance, bro. Like, good riddance. Like, I wish I would have just killed Abraham and not my baby Glenn because I never liked Abraham. Abraham got on my nerve. Abraham got on my last nerve. Sometimes there isn't a why. They just want to do it. Happens all the time. I know, but I, that bothers me. And I feel like it messes me up in real life. I just always got to know the rhyme and reason for something. Like, what are you getting out of it? Even if it's like something evil, you, like, what are you getting though? Then I'm like, oh, okay, got it. Even if it was something evil, like, okay, at least I understand why you did it. But just randomly dropping that gas on the people, did it didn't make no sense. Now, if you randomly drop the gas and take the stuff they have, that will make sense. But y'all just randomly dropped the gas and just kept flying. Like, you just randomly killed them. And then to randomly kill them for, what was that guy's name? What was his name? Major Bill. To randomly kill them and then have Major Bill Bill. <laughs> Major Bill talk about we're, we're, humans aren't gonna last. We're gonna be we're gonna die out in 10, 20 years. And he's like, then why is you killing the last of the humans? Like it don't make sense. Like, am I am I tripping? Am I just not smart enough? Did it go over my head? You're worried about we're gonna die off, but you're killing the last humans left. It don't make sense to me. It don't make sense to me. True, and when Eugene using them for that long pissed me off crazy. You know what? I actually wasn't mad at Eugene for what he did because you got to use what you got. Eugene didn't have the strength, the smarts, nothing. You know, well, he had the smarts. He didn't like smarts as far as like um, survival skills. There was no way for him to survive. And when he first meets abraham and he's kind of begging for his help abraham ain't giving down abraham kept walking so he had to scream out whatever he could think of to get people to help him in the apartment i wasn't even mad at eugene for that i'm gonna be honest with you i really wasn't like what look y'all got played chuck it up take it on the chin keep it moving like the way and, and and everybody was upset but abraham was the only one that had to throw a tantrum hey, i couldn't stand abraham Abraham just a big dummy, like a big strong dummy, just nothing but air in here and nothing but muscles. Like he got on my last nerves. <laughs> I really couldn't stand him. But let me see. Dang, I really I don't care. I told you I really had no notes. I guess that's it. So let me just go off of memory. Okay, so basically, I don't even know where the hell I stopped at. But pretty much, hold on, let me see. Tarsi, is that how you say your name? Who are your top five favorite The Walking Dead characters? These are mine, Rick, Daryl, Michonne, Morgan, and Glenn. Uh, dang. Um, I never cared for rick like rick is rick wasn't someone i liked and he wasn't someone i disliked like i didn't like or dislike now he had moments um which they have a scene in, at the very end of the ones who live where they are showing us flashes of stuff and i'm glad they show flashes flashes of stuff that i'm familiar with but one of the most iconic for me is when rick what was that? Was that guy a pedophile or something like that little group that when we got split up after the prison and Daryl was with this little biker group and they snatched up Rick and I think they snatched up Michonne too and snatched up Carl and Rick went crazy and ripped his 
Now they pissed me off. See, this is what I'm telling you. Carl used to get on my nerve. Yo, daddy done bit this man throat. And the way Carl was acting towards his dad after that pissed me off. Like I did that is for you. But I don't know. I wasn't really a big fan of Rick. But um, I really love Shane. Oh my God, I love Shane. I love my baby Shane. Lord Jesus, I love Shane. Um Oh, this is hard. I really, Shane, Daryl, Glenn, Merle. When Merle dies, oh, mm, right in my gut. I'm mad I had to make his character racist. Um, It just, uh, oh, it annoyed me so bad. And then you have, oh, no, okay, let me not go off on a tangent, but to make, like, one of, because it was only, T Dog and that black lady who stayed behind at the CDC. The only black character named T Dog, and then Merle gotta be racist. Oh God, that hurt me so bad. I hate when you have a show. If the show is set in a certain time period, okay, whatever. That was the time, and of course, racism exists in any time. But it's so unnecessary to make Merle racist like that. Mm, they got on my nerves. They got that was very unnecessary. But I love Merle. What was that? Did I name four? Glenn, Shane, Daryl, Merle. I can't, I mean, it's a lot of other people I like, but when you're talking about favorites, I think it would just be those four. Like I like Morgan. I didn't like Carol until after her daughter died and she turned into like badass Carol who was sneaking and teaching the kids how to use knives and stuff. Um, but I wouldn't say favorite though. Um, I like Michonne just fine, but I wouldn't say favorite. I never really cared for Maggie. Definitely didn't like her sister, but they were fine. What was their dad name? I liked him, but I wouldn't say favorite. But I didn't like him until the prison, because on the farm, he was getting on my nerves. I was like, bruh, bruh, you need to wake up. I would just say those four, if I'm talking about favorites, I would just say those four. There's a lot of people I liked. Um, I like Bob. But favorites, yeah, I would just say those four. Those four would be my favorites. But they pretty much end up... <sighs> this ain't make no sense. We're setting our trap off. And, well, hold on. Before we go to set the trap off at the end to kind of destroy this whole little army, Rick goes for his little meeting with Bill. And what was it called? It was called the something briefing, which I was just all like, what's this briefing? I hope they're going to show us the briefing. Y'all. Yeah, it was a little let down, but it was kind of a fly scene because there's a moment where, where major bill looks at Rick and we had a moment earlier where he was like, let me look in your eyes. So I know. And Rick look at him like he's like, why did you come back? And Rick fly his ass across the desk. That was kind of fly, but it would have been more fly if Rick would have like flew across the desk and killed him. We end up having this little fight that I thought was very unnecessary. And I actually thought wasn't smart. Like it's no telling somebody could have been outside the door. Like we supposed to be trying to do this on the low. I feel like this should have been one of those like quick kill type of situations, but they have this little fight. Um, And something that I didn't think made sense is thorn contacts rick on the walkie talker or he contacts her i can't remember who initiated but she's asking him about the whole thing he's like oh you know major bill went to go be by himself before this whole thing he already sent him on a mission why does she go looking for major bill like what was the catalyst to make her suspicious to even go like question behind what rick said i didn't understand that because they just had it where she goes to second guess him not believe him look for the major to verify what rick said and then she goes to find him he left his hand and she starts piecing stuff together it felt too convenient and it felt like it didn't make any sense like what was the catalyst for her to not be just believe what rick told her any other time Rick tell her something, she just takes it. But this time, she kind of followed up behind him with what he said. So Rick and Michonne go to set this trap where 
when Rick is taking the body, he ends up killing somebody. So we got two people he killed. They we let him turn into walkers. And we rig these grenades, but Thorn pops up on them. Please tell me how in the world the dang explosion literally happens right in front of Thorn, but she completely unscathed, like completely unscathed. And then Rick is surrounded by a bunch of walkers as Michonne and Thorn are fighting. He does a grenade and he's unscathed, but whatever the hell. I mean, you know. But I will say, I usually do not like a very, um, you know, ending that's just perfectly tied with the bow. But I do like that we got that with this. And I will say, The Walking Dead is known for and good for dragging some ish out. I did not think Rick was going to make it home at the end of this. But this might be a one and done type of miniseries. Maybe there's not going to be more seasons. But they finally made it home. Rick finally got to see Judith again and meet his son for the first time. More cheesy dialogue. Are you the brave man? I thought Rick was gonna be like, "No, I'm, I'm like I'm Rick. I'm your dad." But he's just like, "Yeah." But it was, it, it was something else they said in that scene that was really cheesy that I can't quite recall. But I'm very curious. Like, I guess on, I find like last time I saw Judith, she was a baby. But um. Yeah, baby toddler somewhere in there. But I'm guessing as the Walking Dead seasons have progressed, I'm wondering how did they do the time? Did they just age Judas up? Like, was she a baby one season and then a kid the next season? I wonder, like, how did they do that? Because I'm, I, I should look it up, but I cannot quite recall how many actual years have passed since I stopped watching and now for, like, Judas' age. And I think they may have said her age in the show, but I can't remember. I don't know if she's a preteen or what i think they said that the little kid rick's son rick was gone for seven or eight years and i think michonne was pregnant when rick left and he didn't know it so the rj kid must have been like seven or eight but i actually thought the season was really good and it had its flaws but I I like Okafor. I, I like Rick. I like Michonne here. I like the little group Michonne was with, who I thought I thought did not deserve to die. Um, Major Bill, like all I liked everybody that was all up in here. Even the little random guy at the market who was drawing Michonne and his and Rick family. Like I just liked everybody. <laughs> Okay, and I feel like I have such a bad taste in my mouth when I stopped watching the show of it being so many characters that I didn't like. That I feel like Dead City. Now Daryl didn't do so well because I really like nobody but Daryl. I did not like that nun. I didn't like um the little fake ass John Connor that they got on Daryl season. Little fake Jesus Christ they got on <laughs> Daryl season. But I think they did good with characters here. I'm mad Okafor had to die. I really I thought Okafor had a lot of potential. Like I really like that character. Like I feel like he. I don't know if he would have, but maybe he could have like went with Rick and Michonne. I don't know. Hey, you hate his shit. Get off my channel, Danny. Now, see, I thought I thought we was here. Usually we hit. Why did you hate Shane? I love Shane. He went up. Now, see, that's what the writers made happen. But I never felt like that made sense. But even though he went off the deep end, yeah, he went off the deep end. But I always liked Shane. Hated Shane. He went off the deep end. Hated Lori. And really, it's Lori's fault because. The way Lori was getting on my nerve. First of all, your husband been dead for a hop, skip, jump in a week. And you already hooking up with his best friend in the damn woods. And then you simultaneously telling your husband, oh, Shane is a problem. He think this baby is his. He did it up. But then she would turn around and go to Shane and be like, I don't know whose baby this is. And, and I'm saying like, girl, if you don't just stop talking to him, if you don't stop giving mixed signals, if you, oh, it, it was Lori. I'm, look, I'm putting it on Lori. Like, I'm, it's both of them because obviously Shane was already trying, you know, looking at his best friend wife a certain way before all this went down. But she was giving two, two it was, I was just like, girl, pick a side of the fence and stay on it. Um, hated Lori or whatever Carl's mother name was. Yeah, it was Lori. Couldn't stand Father Gabriel. I could not stand Father Gabriel. He's in this spinoff, but he didn't bother me in the spinoff. He's fine in the spinoff. 
my pits, Glenn, Daryl, Sasha, that's it, and Maggie's father, Hersh yeah, Herschel, that was his name. Um, Sasha, 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 Sasha. Who was Sasha? Um, was Sasha the the um it was like it was a bro a brother and sister that we met when Rick was going crazy at the prison, who first came to the prison, but Rick was going crazy, and it was like a father and son with them, and then they went to the governor's town. Is that Sasha? Is that am I thinking of the right person? I think that's Sasha. Sasha was fine. N not a not a favorite of mine, though. Yeah, and that's why I'm like, even before I stopped watching the show, it was starting to I wouldn't even say it didn't even officially start going downhill for me until we got to Alexandria. But I, when it came to the characters that were being introduced, it started going downhill. I didn't care. For, like I said, I didn't care for Abraham and his crew when they popped up. I didn't care for Father Gabriel when he popped up. I didn't care for Sasha and her brother when they popped up. Tyrone. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Speaking of when I was saying that the greatest trick the devil ever pulled is to convince the world that men are emotional or men are logical and women are emotional. Another emotional ass man who was moving on emotion and not logic. When Tyrone is in that prison and he got a crush or date. What's that? Wait, wait a minute. Were they even officially dating or did he just have a crush? Remember that little disease was going around and Carol took it upon herself to kill old girl because she thought she would take out the disease. And Tyrone got the nerve to get in Rick's face. Tell me, you better find who did it. Yeah. I'm saying, like, Tyrone, calm down. Like, he was on a, that inch got on my nerve. And then to have an attitude when Rick, like, punched it. Rick did what he was supposed to do because you're not going to put your hands on me and then I ain't going to do nothing. I wouldn't even apologize if I was Rick. Ty, I think his name was Tyrone. I hope I ain't calling him the wrong name. But he got on my last nerve with that whole situation and when he goes on that run with daryl them and he just cutting through the little thing and acting crazy i'm just like and it'd be moments like this where i be sitting here like so is this that is is this moving on logic this this ain't emotional i swear it's the greatest trick the devil ever pulled because men are emotional as hell Rick had more than nine lives, y'all, and they messed up the aging from the original series. They aged up Carl so many years before they killed him, and Judith was still a baby, like one or two years old. See, that's what I'm wondering. Like, how did they? Because when they showed in this spinoff a flashback of Carl, he looked like the Carl that was there when I started watching the show. And I'm like, but that was a that was a hundred years ago. But then we see Judith. That's why I'm like, how did they? Like, did y'all finish a season and Judith was a baby and then y'all started a season and Judith was an old, uh, older kid? Like, <laughs> how did they do that? Judith was a toddler by season six through seven. She was aged up in season nine and it's been the same actress ever since. Okay. Sasha took that pill Eugene gave her before they locked in the cabin and offed herself by listening to music. When they opened the co coffin, she was zombified. Why did she do that? I'm confused. Sasha took the pill Eugene gave her. What pill? Before they locked in the coffin, offed herself while listening to music. When they opened the coffin, she was zombified. I don't know. I willingly take a pill to die and I get in a coffin and I turn into a zombie so I could lay in the coffin and be a zombie forever. I'm confused. I don't understand. I don't understand. <laughs> That's not really making no sense to me. But I just feel like I like all three spinoffs, but I hate to be that person, but I just feel like nothing will ever be the magic of those earlier seasons of walking dead like i can think of like so many iconic moments when i was watching the walking dead it was so many first times of seeing things on that show that i was just that was so exciting um carol daughter walking out of that barn like i will never forget like that moment glenn tied to that chair when merle throw that uh walker in the room with him and I will never forget that moment. Like, it's just certain moments that were just so good. And when I think about the spinoffs, I enjoyed them. I think the ones I enjoyed the most is the, the ones who live and Dead City. Daryl Dixon, I enjoyed the least. Daryl Dixon was good. 
I like the villains. I like Daryl, but I just really didn't like the nun and that little John Connor kid. Um, but there were no like iconic moments for me. There were good moments, but nothing that was living up to Carol Daughter. Bro, y'all. Oh my god, I'm checking. Carol Dottle coming out of that barn, like that was a moment in time. I will literally never forget. I want to say Walking Dead came on on Sundays back then. I will never forget watching The Walking Dead with my mom. And we were the whole time, we, me and my mama kept saying, man, Carol Dottle dead. Carol. But when Shane go crazy and Rick holding the dang walker with that stick and everybody out there by that barn, and Shane is just shoot, and Shane shooting all the walkers coming out. And Rick still holding that dumbass walker. And then Shane come over and shoot the walker, Rick holding. And then we kind of sitting there stunned. And then we hear this breathing. And then I, I think if I remember correctly, they just showed her shoes. And everybody started, and I was like, that moment is so goddamn iconic. Like, I will never forget the way me and my mama, like, literally fell out of our bodies when Carol's daughter came out of that <laughs> Like, that was just so good. It was such good build up because we, look, we had Daryl out in the woods. Daryl was finally, you know, being a part of the group. He out in the woods. And then I think we had this whole thing where Daryl was talking to Carol and calling her a stupid woman and all, but he was still out there searching. And we had this whole, for some reason, they was leaving food out on the road for like it was just this whole buildup about Carol's daughter. And I like how we was kind of distracted because you know Shane was on his de-evolution and all this. He was devolving, and we had all this other ruckus going on. And then her daughter come out that goddamn barn as a walker. Been in that a whole time. Ooh, like that was such a moment. And like Glenn getting kidnapped by Merle and Glenn being tied to that damn chair and Merle throws a walk. If I remember correctly, Merle like threw the walker at him. Or did he just, am I remembering it? Am I embellishing? Like, am I, I feel like he didn't just put the walker in the room. I feel like Merle threw the walker. At Glenn, and that's what also pissed me off so bad about the way Glenn died. Throughout the whole series, Glenn had such a goddamn survival instinct. Glenn was going to survive, baby. Like, no matter what Glenn had to do, Glenn was going to survive. That's why it pissed me off the way he died. Like, Glenn is the type of character that should go out fighting, in my opinion. Like, the way he died, where it was like nothing he could do that, oh, God, don't you? Let me keep reminiscing on the good things. Because I don't want to think about when Glenn got killed. That pissed me off too bad. But there are just so many iconic. I rewatch those earlier seasons so often. And I always stop <laughs> when they get to Alexandria. Maybe there were still some iconic. I think there were still some iconic moments where we got to, once we got to Alexandria. Um, I just can't remember none. <laughs> But when I rewatch, I always thought we get to Alexandria because it always irks me when we get to Alexandria and everyone is just like, we need, we need to stay here. We need this. And I was just like, why is y'all acting so desperate to be here? Weren't we just in, um, what was the little fake town called that was supposed to be a sanctuary when we was following the train tracks and the niggas was eating us? Like, have we learned nothing? I'm like, we have been on the road. We have survived. Yes, it was hard. But they, the way they was acting so desperate, and I'll never forget, specifically Michonne, but we need this. Girl, you was out there by yourself with two jawless walkers. Like, what are you talking about? We need to be, I don't know. Everything just started to get on my nerve when we got <laughs> to Alexandria. <laughs> but I think there were some iconic moments. It's just that I've only seen that time once, which was way back in the day when it first aired, because I never rewatch it. But if I remember correctly, I think an iconic moment was hmm, the lady I was saying that I never saw Rick and Michonne together romantically. I think the last person I remember was Rick had a crush on the lady who husband was abusive. And I can't remember what happened to pop it off that Rick did. But we were kind of, I think we were, why were we all outside? We were all together. And I think the guy went to attack Rick, but I think instead he killed 
the head lady husband or her son and she was like rick told rick to get him and then next thing you know morgan was like right there i think that was maybe a pretty iconic moment maybe um and then i think something happens and a bunch of walkers get inside alexandria and i think we're walking through smog or something and that same lady little punk ass son shoots carl in the eye and michonne chop his head off or something maybe that was a little iconic moment um and i feel like when we first hear about negan before he's actually introduced i think we made a plan to like be proactive and take negan out and i think we tracked down this woman and like wasn't it people we were tracking down that we thought they were negan but they weren't the real negan it was like a woman Am I remembering correctly? Like, I feel like all of this is very fuzzy in my memory because I only saw it once, but I feel like that was a very fly moment. Like, we thought she was Negan, and they ended up taking her out, but she wasn't the real Negan. I feel like it was a bunch of different places with the saviors, and it was people that we kept thinking was Negan. And then I think it was also an iconic moment where it, I think it was a right-hand man of Negan that I could not stand. Like, he was a good character. When I say can't stand, it's because he was a bad guy. But I think it was, wasn't it like this chubby girl and Daryl and somebody else walking on the train tracks and the girl was in the middle of talking and like an arrow shoots through her eye? What am I thinking of, y'all? Like, I feel like these are all probably fuzzy moments, but if you saw the show, I think you would know the scenes I'm talking about. I think those were some, like, good moments. Maybe I should try to rewatch those times, but... I feel like the most iconic moments that just always are so vivid in my mind, like I can remember the moments that I watched them for the first time are those earlier Walking Dead seasons. And I've never seen the other spinoffs. I didn't see, um, what is that first Walking Dead spinoff? I think it starts in the like the regular world before the apocalypse happens. I can't think what it was called, but I didn't watch all that stuff. But based on these three spinoffs that I've seen, I just think nothing, they're good, but I just feel like nothing will be the magic of those earlier Walking Dead seasons. Like, it's just something about those seasons that were just so good. No, it wasn't her choice to get in the coffin. I forgot who was the villain during that time. Um, Well, if it's... You're talking about a time I didn't watch it, so I feel like it had to be Negan. Wasn't Negan the only villain after Glenn died? Was that their only villain for, like, all those years? I forgot who the villain was during that time. I got to go back and watch that episode, but Eugene slipped her the pill, and she chose to die that way. Okay, so it wasn't her choice to be in the coffin, but since she had to be in the coffin, she made a plan with Eugene to take a pill to die. Okay. <laughs> Maybe there's some context I'm missing. Most of the kids annoyed me when Carl had to save baby Judah from being killed by that little blind girl who already stabbed her little sister. No, 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 no. I don't agree. Most of the kids were, for me, the only kid that was annoying was Carl. Um, And I don't remember Carl saving baby Judah from getting killed. When that little girl goes crazy, that was after they split up. We got split up after the prison, which I always thought. That after we got split up at the farm, it made no sense for us to not have a contingency plan if we get split up again, a certain place to meet with a car ducked off somewhere, but whatever the hell. But it was Tyrone, I think his name was Tyrone. It was Tyrone, it was Carol, and it was the two little girls who are sisters, who I think their dad died or something when that sickness happened, and it was baby Judith. And Carol had to kill the crazy little girl that turned into Michael Myers. Not Carl. Carl didn't save Judah. Carl was with Rick and Michonne. Or that little boy who went and shut up when they had to hold hands and walk out of the house covered in blood. And he got, yes, that, now that's the scene I was talking about when Carl gets um shot in the eye. Yeah, and then, yeah, I didn't care about them kids. But see, that's the time when we was in Alexandria that I said I didn't, didn't really care for that time. Yes, I'm with you on those kids. But the kids at the prison, well, the kids at the prison weren't really a big focal point. Um, I think the most focus was that little kid who was, I think he was the first to get that sickness. And then they got a little more focus once we were split up after the prison and we were at that little house with the two little girls and Carol. But the kids, the only kid that really bothered me was Carl before alexandria merle and daryl in merle's last moments was so sad oh y'all oh yeah don't get me started on that oh that mm, that killed me 
dysfunctional family, but they still love, they care for each other in their own way. Yes. I, yeah, Merle is definitely one of my top favorite characters. I love Merle. I love Merle. And Merle is one of those characters that's an example of why I always say that for me, like, I don't think we're either good or bad. It's kind of a duality. And I love characters that have more of a murky kind of morality because Merle was essentially a bad guy. But in his final moments, he did good. Like he did something good and selfless. Now, I was kind of mad about how he went out just in the fact that if like if if I remember correctly, the governor comes into the little thing where the house, whatever, where he's hiding at, and they have a little face off, and Merle kind of get his behind kicked. If I remember correctly, like I feel like I wanted Merle to kind of do more damage, if that makes sense. But it was a good ending nonetheless. And then when Daryl comes up after the whole thing is over and sees his brother as a walker. Ooh, child, hurt my heart. Hurt my heart so bad. Hurt my heart so bad. Y'all make me want to go re. I have literally rewatched those. <laughs> I will rewatch those early Walking Dead seasons from beginning to um, probably about the point we survived that little tornado. I, I think we survived the tornado right before the little scout from Alexandria come find us. But I normally watch about there. Um, and it's some it's some moments that didn't work for me i didn't care for beth i didn't care for singing beth i didn't i didn't fully care for all the scenes when we're separated that was kind of irksome um and beth in that hospital kind of got on my nerve i was kind of over it and that's what i mean by walking dead be dragging stuff out but for the most part those are the the gym seasons to me but that is our discussion on the ones who live. It was kind of scattered. I had no notes. <laughs> but I think I remember the gist of the important things to cover. Um, but I will say as much as I still feel like Rick is one of those characters. He has always been one of those characters for me that I don't like and I don't not like. I'm pretty just indifferent. Like there's like, I love Daryl. I love Glenn. Like, I like those characters. I don't, I don't really care about Rick. <laughs> but I will say I feel like I love the, like, savage, <laughs> animalistic, <laughs> like, off the deep end Rick. And it's so crazy because I feel like Rick is that character that, like, never even wanted to be a leader. He kind of just, like, had to be the leader because who the hell else was going to be the leader? But I feel like Rick literally never wanted that. So it's so fun to me when we get to the spinoff and Okafor is looking at him like, yo, you're a leader and you need to step up. You need... And I'm like, this is never nothing that Rick ever wants. It's always something that has to be, like, kind of put on him like he has to step up and be the leader out of necessity because there ain't nobody else to do it but i really feel like rick ain't never want to be y'all leader and it's so funny how rick was the last one to join the group like our core original group but he was the leader like who the hell was leading y'all before rick came um, i guess shane <laughs> but you know shane ain't no leader it's like the ones who want to be a leader are never a good leader but the ones who don't want to be a leader, be the good leader. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Rick and Shane's confrontation in the second to last episode of season two, that was an intense scene for me. Okay, are you talking about, um, yes, when Shane goes to, like, try to kill Rick, but Rick kills Shane, and then Carl pop up with the, um, with the gun because his dad done shot his little fake ass stepdaddy. <laughs> yeah, that was good. That was good. And it was like, I feel like as much as I do love and praise those early seasons, it, for me, it, as a whole, I think those early seasons are very iconic and they're my favorite, but it be getting a little drab. We got a little drab at the farmhouse, but that's what I mean. This show, you know, they be dragging stuff out. <laughs> 
the fact that in the prison they actually made some sort of makeshift cure yet they ran out i was so pissed y'all couldn't make a second batch was herschel the only one who could make it um the fact that in the prison they actually made some sort of makeshift cure yet they ran out i was so wait hold on i don't understand because we only left the prison because the governor came back and like didn't, he, didn't the governor have a tank am i remembering correctly i think the damn governor had a damn tank that he shot through that mug um and beat the brakes off rick <laughs> i chopped her so head off didn't we leave the prison because we had no choice um and that was right in the midst of when herschel like herschel was the only little doctor they had was um i think he was a veterinarian but he was our only little doctor and glenn was on the brink of being dead because he had got sick and he was just now you know starting to get better but he wasn't even better yet but i think we left the prison because we had to uh, we had to just leave with the clothes on our back. We didn't even have a chance to do nothing. Because the governor was just out there. He popped the hell up. That hurt me so bad. Like, I loved... I loved that finale. I think that was the season finale. I loved that finale. But I was so annoyed. Oh, God. I will never forget. Like, I'm not as annoyed when I go back to rewatch. So I'm just like, whatever. But when the show aired at the time, I was so annoyed they brought the governor back and i like the governor i thought the governor was a good villain for us to face but i was like man child, why, why are we beating a dead horse like why are we bringing him back again and then more of the drab stuff that i was talking about when it does get a little drab when we was watching him i think he had his beard and he was just going through a little town and i was like child i'm not trying to see this like what is this this is boring like what is going on i don't care about this and I wasn't the biggest fan when it starts up when we at the prison and Rick is being a farmer and we got a little delegation council and we got all these new characters that I really could give a crap about. <laughs> I guess they were just here to die because <laughs> we took in the people from the governor town. Yeah, it's a lot of stuff that I just wasn't feeling. But as a whole, The Walking Dead is probably one of my favorite TV shows of all time. Carl turned cold real damn quick. After he killed Shane, he gave his own mother the cold shoulder for sleeping with Shane. Both her son and husband didn't want nothing to do with it. It was the funniest thing to me, and I'm so sorry. I got so much sadness. And I feel like it's probably so dead wrong that I like Shane so much and can't stand Lori. They both are culpable for their affair, but Shane was just more likable for me. I don't know. Maybe because I think he attractive, but I just really like Shane. I could not stand Lori. And honestly... I, it don't even have nothing to do with the affair. I really couldn't stand Laura from the beginning. And I don't know these people, okay? She is probably the greatest person in the world. You know, no offense. But I just don't like the actress either. Like, it's, I don't know. Were y'all here? Do y'all remember when I, when I did that, that video about how much I don't like, um, damn it my mind just went blank who is them two people that i just it's two actors that well three rosario dawson is there but i can kind of stomach rosario dawson a little more as time has passed um what's my uma thurman and um is it guy richie i just cannot stand them and i cannot give you a rhyme or reason like uma thurman almost ruins kill bill for me like i just don't <laughs> like uma thurman it is do y'all have those do anybody have actors that there is no rhyme or reason you just don't like them and like i said i don't know these people so no disrespect to them they could be the greatest people in the world but the lady that played Lori, i've seen her and other stuff it is just something about her i don't like her there was a tv show she was in i think after the walking dead i want to say it was about aliens or something i ain't couldn't stay on her in that either so that could be part of why I didn't like Lori. But honestly, Lori was written so terribly. She was so annoying and obnoxious. And just got, like, it's a moment where I think it was Carol had, like, an attitude with her and was saying something about how, you know, because her husband is the one in charge, she feel like she got a certain power. I was right there with Carol. Like, go ahead, Carol. Tell her about herself. I could not stand Lori. But it gave me so much satisfaction. The way Carl and Rick treated her after the farm, after Shane got killed. <laughs> because I was just like, get him, get him, get him. Because <laughs> I couldn't stand her. <laughs> but no disrespect to that lady. Much love to you. 
I think the cure was before Herschel got bit on the leg and had to get it amputated. So it was before the governor started. Wait, when you say a cure, are you talking about a cure to the zombie virus or are you talking about a cure to that little sickness that was going around? Yes, don't like Uma Thurman. Okay, so it's not just me. It is something I do. Uma Thurman, like, and like, I will like stuff she plays in. Like, it's a movie I love with her and Ben Affleck where he like, go back in time or like, leave a message for the future. I don't know, child, something like that. But Uma Thurman is in there and I can't stand her. And I love Kill Bill. Oh my God. But it is like, she ruins the movie. I'm just like, Quentin, you couldn't have gotten nobody else. Like, please, like. I don't know. It is just something about Uma Thurman. I just cannot stand that lady. Like, I really can't stand that lady. I'm so sorry. And, like, I don't even know what it is. And, and I feel like there are actors that I love. And I probably can't even give you a rhyme or reason. There is just a quality there, just something about them that I just like that person. That, I think that's how I feel about Shane. John Berthanel, who plays Shane, I just love him. But it's just something about that lady that played Lori Grimes. Like, I can't stand. I don't like her hair. I don't like her eyes. I don't like her face. I don't like the way she talked. Like, I just, just don't like that lady. <laughs> and I feel that way about Uma Thurman. I can't stand Uma Thurman. I don't like her hair. I don't like the way she looks. I don't like her cheekbones. Like, I don't like her ears. I don't like the way her nerve, her, her nose curves. I just don't like her. Like, and I don't know what it is. But I love, but shout out to that lady. Okay, no disrespect to that lady. Yeah, and what's so funny is, do y'all remember way back in the day, when Uma Thurman was married to, um, what's my guy? Oh my God. My mind is going blank. Um, damn it. And I just saw him in, what is, what is his name? I know his name and it's going to kill me if I do not get his name. What is this white man name who I love? I just saw him in Daybreak. Ethan Hawke. Do y'all remember way back in the day when she was married to Ethan Hawke and he it was like a whole scandal that he cheated on her when she was pregnant? Now, back at that time, I think I was either a kid or a preteen, and I didn't really have an opinion on Uma Thurman, like how I don't like her now. And I will never forget when that whole thing came out and I was all like, I don't like Ethan Hawke. He, he cheated on her when she was pregnant. I love Ethan Hawke to death and I can't stand Uma Thurman. But it's so funny to me when I think about the fact that when that whole scandal happened, I was all team Uma Thurman, and I was all like, F <laughs> Ethan Hawk, but he's the one I like, and she's the one I don't like. And that's something else. I really can't give you a rhyme or reason why I love Ethan Hawk. I love Ethan Hawk, and I know somebody who can't stand him. They feel like he can't act, they feel like he played the same character in all his movies. I love Ethan Hawk. I love every movie he played in, I love him in everything he do. I think he is so great. It's that's just how it be when you have um I don't even know what you call it's not a parasocial relationship because I know I don't know these people. But you know, you see people on the screen and some people you like and, and you some people you don't like. <laughs> yes, don't like Uma Thurman. Either you mean to tell me she killed Vivica Fox and Lucy Lou, don't believe it. That Kill Bill Volume One, I love that movie. That's my favorite. I don't Kill Bill Volume Two is fine. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of Volume Two, but Volume One, so iconic. The Vivica fight, iconic. The crazy 88 and the Lucy Lou fight, iconic. Lucy Lou and that little man holding that man head up, yelling and giving her speech. Like, that whole volume one is so good. The only moment from volume two that's really iconic to me is when she finally faces down the one-eyed girl. I love that. But outside of that, I don't really care for volume two. I don't really care for it that much. Like, I mean, like, it's fine. It's good. But I'm not the biggest fan of it. Yeah, it was a cure to the sickness going around, but that was so big in their condition, like no medical care or professional, nothing. Yeah. Well, guys, thank you for showing up to this live. And actually, I have a live that we're going to do after this <laughs> to discuss the two movies, uh, Parallel and what's the other movie double blind so we'll take i guess an intermission and then we will come back for our next live topic if that is all we have to say about the walking dead and the ones who live i will see you um in 10 minutes <laughs> wait let's see we got one more comment 
They should have put the one-eyed girl in the first movie. How was she better or better fighter than that than the other two anticlimactic? Wait a minute. They should have put the one-eyed girl in the first movie, volume one. How was she? Who is she? Better or better fighter than the other two? Who's better or better? When you say she, are you talking about Uma Thurman or are you talking about the one-eyed lady? I think her name was Elle. I don't know. Um, are you talking about the one-eyed lady? Um, I don't think she should be in volume one. I don't think it would make sense because she has to go through Bud first to get to her. So like, yeah, she shouldn't, she can't fight her in volume one. Um, what did you think was anticlimactic? Their sh her showdown with the one-eyed lady? I definitely don't think that was anticlimactic. That was the best part of volume two. But I'm not clear, though, on what you're saying was um anticlimactic. Or do you mean that the very end of the actual movie? I think it has the end it should have, where she has her daughter and she's like crying and then relief in the bathroom and then she just goes and sits with her daughter. I think that's a, the perfect ending. I think that's the right ending. Um, And I think that the whole point is that she's mowing her way through all these people to get to Bill. So I think mowing your way through everybody has to be harder than when you actually get to Bill. So, but I'm not sure what you're calling anticlimactic though. I want to call any of it anticlimactic. Um, it's just something about, I mean, I don't, I can't really get, into into it but volume one is the better one to me but i definitely wouldn't call volume two anticlimactic i'm i think it i think the story plays out how it needs to but i will see you guys um oh wait one second they made it seem like the one-eyed girl was the round before the final boss. Her fights with Vivica and Lucy seemed more challenging, but maybe that's my opinion. Um, More challenging. I think the most challenging fight, I wouldn't call Vivica's fight more challenging than the one-eyed lady. No, I wouldn't call it more challenging. Um, She was getting her behind kicked by Vivica, and she was getting her behind kicked by the one-eyed lady, Like, and she was kicking their behind. I don't think one was harder than the other. I think the hardest was when she went after Lucy Lou because she literally had to fight a whole damn army before she got to Lucy Lou. But the actual fight with Lucy Lou, I wouldn't say was harder. Or I don't think her fight with Vivica, Lucy Lou, or the one-eyed lady, I don't think all three, all three of them was pretty even killed to me as far as I don't think one was harder than the other. But I think Lucy Lou was the hardest because she had to mow her way through the crazy 88, which they tell us it wasn't exactly 88, but still she had to fight through a whole crew of people before she could even get to Lucy Lou. And really, she loses to Bud, and he's the most like, how the hell you lose to him <laughs> out of the crew? <laughs> he the only person who ain't kept himself up, ain't kept up no fighting, working at the little makeshift crap dot little place, and she loses to Bud? <laughs> And I never understood, y'all, why are we getting over the whole other subject? But I never understood why was she waiting under his trailer when he came home? I would have been in the trailer to surprise him when he walked through the door. I never understood that. But, yeah, if you're talking about stuff being more challenging, Bud should have been the easiest to take out, and she loses to him. <laughs> but I'll see y'all in the, in the next live that we finna do.